Hello, welcome to this course in academic communication skills. Now the aim of this course is to make you much better, much more skillful, proficient in speaking and writing in an academic context. The title of the course is Effective Academic Communication and this is Unit 1 on the Written and the Spoken and it's Module 1, The Four Modes and I'll tell you what the four modes are very soon but I think you can probably guess already. What I'm going to be doing in this module is laying the basis for the rest of the course by getting you to realize, to consider, to think about how the written and the spoken are completely different from each other. There's, well, I want to say there's no connection between the two, but of course there is a connection between the two, and the connection between the two is that they're both language and in this case they're both English language. I'm going to be developing your skills in writing and um, speaking and I'm going to be doing that completely through English. Uh, I hope though and I believe that as you consider these questions about writing and speaking um, you'll be able to transfer the skills into any other language. It doesn't need to be English. Um, this is quite a big subject because there are different um, conventions that apply in different cultures and different languages um, to do with what a piece of writing should look like and indeed how you should speak but you'll know that because you'll have studied those languages but the basic differences between speaking and writing don't depend upon the language that is being used they are far more fundamental than that and this module is going to be looking at the fundamental differences between the written and the spoken. And then we're going to build on that understanding for the rest of this unit. I think it would be fair to say that the first, yes, the first four modules are going to be reflective and analytical looking in more and more depth and more and more detail about how completely different these two manifestations of language are and then the final four modules will be the the, the practical advice and exercises where you begin to develop your writing skills and develop your speaking skills and because developing writing skills is a much bigger deal and also much easier to do uh, through the medium of an online course there is a whole second unit which concentrates on the fundamentals of academic writing and goes into a great deal of practical detail about how you write academic essays. But we're a long way from that because this is right at the beginning of the course and module one looking at what are the four modes. And there is a 
danger with this module that I'm just telling you, well, I'm not telling you anything because what I'm giving you should be blindingly obvious but but that's the point it's blindingly obvious that is it is so obvious that most people don't think about it and most people get on with their lives just accepting it and because they don't think about it a lot of people tend to think that they can speak well, they don't even think. They just do it. They speak in a way that is quite similar to the way that they write. And they write in a way that is quite similar to the way that they speak. Uh, and this doesn't work. Uh, the chances are, if you're doing that, you're doing neither of those two things very well. If you are doing one of them very well, you must necessarily be doing the other one very badly. Um, and I think it's fair to say um, in the academic context that that quite often happens. Um, that is there may be someone who is a very good academic writer who writes very good academic books but when that person comes to give a lecture that lecture is very difficult to understand and completely boring and the students hate sitting there and having to listen to this lecture and they'd be much better off reading the book that is a very common scenario and in the next um in the next module, which is called the difficulty of listening, uh, I explain um, how this often happens. And it isn't the fault of the listener. It's the fault of the lecturer who's giving a very bad lecture because the lecturer does not understand how, how to speak so that it's easy for the listener to understand. there is a similar kind of problem too with people who who write write books that are a little bit too much like speech um, but that is more of a problem for students that's the that's the big problem for students rather than lecturers and academics I think if you've got to the point of being a professor, you're probably going to be able to write pretty well. But um, undergraduate students might find it quite easy to talk about their subject. But getting their ideas down can be quite a bit of a challenge. But then you have all of those people in the middle who are doing neither very well and this course i suppose is well i hope it's for everybody i hope everybody's going to find something useful in it let's think about these four modes we have speaking and listening and reading and writing. Now if we go back to the way these these four modes of language come into being in the individual human being's mind. If we go back to being a baby. Well a baby acquires language by listening. Everything's listening as far as language is concerned for that baby. And then the baby starts 
speaking. <laughs> this is wonderful. The baby says, Mama and Dada. And then the child grows up a little bit, starts to walk, and is taught how to read. Reading doesn't come naturally. There's something really a little bit weird about reading. Um, why, why do those particular marks on the paper signify particular sounds? And of course there are different alphabets, different ways of writing things down that are magnificently unlike each other. But in whatever language, whatever culture you are, you begin to learn to read and then begin to learn to write. And you go through the education system and you get very good, we hope, <laughs> at all four of these. You're good at listening, you're good at speaking, you're good at writing and you're good at reading. And then you can go to university and everything will be fine. Or so it seems. And you tend to just not think about it anymore, maybe. You think you're good enough at all of them. However, I think everybody, everybody would agree that one of these four is much easier than the other three. I'll tell you which one's easier in about five or ten minutes. But before I do, let's divide these four into two columns. So on one side you have writing and speaking. Speaking and writing are the productive modes of language and those are the two that I'm concentrating on in this course. In order to do that though we need to look at the other column, reading and listening, which are the receptive modes of language because in order to speak effectively you've got to understand what it's like to listen you have to take the listener into account in order to speak well equally when you're writing you've got to think about what it's like to read and really that is um the point and the basis of, of these early modules. I'm going to be looking quite a bit in the first four modules at the experience of listening and the experience of reading. And from that, what we learn about those different experiences, we can use that knowledge to develop the skills of speaking to help the listener and writing to help the reader. I'm going to illustrate and demonstrate how listening is different from reading by getting you to consider what is the difference between listening to a lecture and reading a book and which one is easier. Let's have a look at the beginning of a lecture about working abroad. Uh, I want to talk about something that is, uh, is an issue that may or may not, but most likely may affect most of you here. Talking about um, uh, working abroad or deciding to sort of spend some of your life being a professional abroad, what kind of choices you make and how would this impact the rest of your life? Um, oh, it sounds like an ambitious speech. Uh, basically, uh, we live today, uh, and, and it may sound like a cliche, but actually we do live in a very interconnected world. If 100, 200 years ago to get a letter from Paris to St. Petersburg took 
six months. And getting a job abroad used to be a very difficult thing. Now we have you know, Skype, we have LinkedIn. We actually can research our target job. We can, we can decide to move there. And we can decide to actually stay in our countries until we actually get the perfect job. Some of us actually go there, out there and get it. But the whole point is I want to talk about sort of generally the global professionals, uh, the global talent, as it moves from a place to another following the labor market needs in different parts around the world. Now, um, I, would, I would start actually by talking about first the ones who will hunt and target a job from their home country and then actually go there, where you will estimate the vectors, the two vectors you need, you know, your expertise and the need for your expertise and where it is and of course the salary. So. Well, how was that? What was the, what was the experience like there? Maybe it was not quite a fair test because I didn't give you any background information about what the lecture was going to be about. But I think it was on a subject that you could all relate to the idea of working abroad. Um, it wasn't a very technical, a very difficult lecture. And in that way, it should have been quite easy to understand, maybe. Depending on how the speaker was speaking. The other point is that it was pure listening. Yes, you could see the speaker and he was moving his hands around a little bit, not as much as I do, I don't think, which may be a good thing. Maybe my, <laughs> maybe my hand gestures uh, distract you rather than help you. I don't know, but I can't stop myself from doing it and put my hands behind my back. It's, it's not... It's not natural. I kind of need my hands to speak. Um, so you could see the speaker. But then it was just. His. Voice. Um, what I mean was he did not at that point in the lecture, at the beginning of the lecture, uh, he did not have any PowerPoint slides and any words for you to read or any pictures or any diagrams or anything like that. So it was just pure voice. And I want you to, I want you to think about what, what that is like as an experience. And contrast it with what the reading experience is like. Because the reading experience is completely different. Now, let's think about what happens when you read a book. And let's actually just get that. Oh, here we are. Here we have. Now, I said that was an easy lecture on an easy subject. Right. Yes, this. <laughs> um, is a one of the more difficult books. It's also big, thick, and it's um, Jean-Paul Sartre's Being and Nothingness. And it's a challenging read. But what is the experience of reading a book like this? How is that not like the lecture? But it, it couldn't be more different. <laughs> you hold, you hold the book <laughs> in your hands. It's an object. You can do what you like with it. If you want to look at page 416 first, you can. Might not be that good an idea, um, but 
you've got a table of contents so you get some idea of what's in the book uh, if you go to the back of the book um, there's a conclusion at the back of the book. Oh, there, there's also a, a key to special terminology which might be useful um, and there's an index so you can find and it's a name index so we can pick a name Heraclitus interesting guy Greek philosopher pre-Socratic philosopher he's on page 117 so I can go to page 117 if I want to and find what Jean Paul Sartre says about Heraclitus um, perhaps Uh, but I can't actually find what he says about Heraclitus. It's got to be in here somewhere. Unless there's a mistake in the index. Um, the bond between the do 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 Oh, I, I cannot. Oh, here he is. Oh, well, it, it's actually not a reference to Heraclitus exactly, but it is the adjective Heracleton. These remarks can show us that there is something inexact in that scepticism of Heraclitan origin, which insists solely on the fact that I already no longer am what I say I am. Of course, but I, I, I'm, I like Sartre, he's interesting, but now is not the time to get into that. The point is, reading's nothing like listening, is it? Um, when you are looking at page, you're looking, when you're looking at page 117, you, you experiencing it as a visual space. And I was trying to find the word Heraclitus looking down that space, backwards and forwards. When you're listening, you absolutely don't have that experience. What you hear is one word at a time coming out of the speaker's mouth. Maybe not like that. Not well, One hopes not like that. So the reader has much, much, much more control. The reader can read the pages in any order. Um, and this is not a course in academic reading, but in most cases with academic reading, it isn't a good idea to start at the beginning of a book and just read. Um, you use you use the book as an object and you move from page to page now when you're listening to a lecture you can't do that at least not when you're listening to a lecture in a lecture theater the speaker is just speaking and you have no control at all and the other thing is you don't actually know what you have no real sense of what the speaker is going to say next. You don't know what the speaker is going to say next unless the, t the speaker has told you what, what he or she is going to say next. When you have the book in your hand, you can see where it's going. Um, and you can flick forward and see how many more paragraphs in this section. Mm, okay, and then you, you 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 can what do you have? And you can you can literally see where it's going, and how many how many more pages before the next section. And if you've unclear or you've forgotten something you can go back 
if you're not sure what a word means, well, you can go to that, um, whatever it was called, key to special terminology and see whether that explains it. If you're still struggling, you can go and get another book, a dictionary or something, or you can go online, you can go on Wikipedia and you can, you can find out information. You don't need to just be reading one book at the same time. You can read Jean Paul Sartre at the same time as you're reading Wittgenstein and move between the two. If you want to. Um, you, as a reader, have far, far, far more control than a listener does. Yes, with advances in technology, that distinction is becoming a little less clear. So you can press the pause button on me if you want to. And then you can go back in the video and listen to something again and go forward. Maybe if, if, if things are getting a bit boring, you can go, let's see if it gets more interesting. And so you can move around a little bit now with the recorded videos and the recorded sound but even so it's a different experience and why is it a different experience well let's think about that listening exists in time it is temporal and the words come in a temporal sequence one word after another. Reading is, is spatial. It exists in space. The other thing, of course, is the parts of the body involved are completely different. Because reading is visual. And so you use your eyes. Um, and your hands to hold the book. Oh, and, you, and when you're writing, you use your hands to type or, or write. Listening, of course, you're using your ears. And to speak, you're using your mouth. You might not think that matters, but it really, really does. Um, because the parts of the brain involved in listening and speaking are not the same parts of the brain that are involved in um, writing and reading and the two language systems and the two experiences are absolutely not like each other and um, yeah and this is the moment to say what you probably already know that reading is easy easiest Yes, of course, if it's a book as difficult as, as Wittgenstein or Jean-Paul Sartre, it's not going to be an easy read. But imagine what it would be like to try to understand Wittgenstein's Tractatus if it was being spoken to you. I think that would be absolutely impossible. <laughs> it's difficult enough to read it, but at least you can, when you're reading it, you can read one of Wittgenstein's sentences and then go away and have a cup of coffee and have a think about what it might mean and then come back and read the next one. You're not getting it coming at you relentlessly one word at a time like this. And most... Yeah, most native, uh, sorry, most non-native speakers find listening quite challenging often. You think you understand a language, you've learnt a language, maybe you've learnt a language through reading books and then you go to the country and you hear people speaking, you can't, you can't catch up, you can't grasp what they're saying and it seems that they are speaking too quickly. We're going to look at that in an academic context in the next module when we're focusing on the difficulties of listening.
and how it is that certain lecturers speak in a way that makes it impossible, really impossible, for the listener to understand what they're saying. And the answer is that they, they speak in the way that they write. You get another set of problems if you write in the way that you speak. You've got to do the two things absolutely differently. That's the point of this course. To understand that writing is about creating a space, a visual space. And you organise ideas, information on that visual space, on that page, within that space. And that is nothing, nothing at all like speaking, which is creating a sequence in time. And presenting the information in a sequence in a way that the listener can grasp the ideas. They, they could not be more different. But as I say, most people don't really think about that. They just get on with their lives and think there's just language. And it it's spoken or whether it's written it really doesn't make any difference well it makes an enormous difference and that's what this course is about so in the next module we're going to be looking at what happens when somebody speaks in the way that they write and what happens is you can't understand that's basically what happens. But we'll look at, at why and how it is that you really just can't understand. And then in the module after that, we'll look about, oh, look at, all right, how do you speak in a way that somebody can understand you? And then module four is going to get really deep down into the details of how different the written and the spoken are. And then we build up from that and we develop your skills in writing and speaking. That's basically how this unit goes. So I hope you're going to keep with me. Um, And see it through to the end, not just of unit one, but unit two as well. There is a little exercise for you to do, which should be fairly easy and fairly gentle. And I'll give you the answers at the beginning of the next video. So. I hope I'll see you soon. Take care.